Hello, um, welcome. This is uh, Daniel Weekly number 25, March 18, 2015. I'm here again. This is Wednesday. I haven't had enough coffee yet this morning, but I'm, um, I'm doing this a bit earlier. New angle on the camera. Hello. Um, so, I, I attended the TCPIP Geeks um, meetup yesterday here in Stockholm. Fun. We got to talk about GPG and um, IPv6 and the uh, kernel tuning for, for real time stuff. Fun. At the next TCPIP Geeks Stockholm at May 6, I'll talk about HTP, HTTP2. So, um, if you're interested, you're in Stockholm, sign up, join. Fun. Um, so, my videos now uh, uh, surpass 12,000 views. Kind of amazing. That makes it roughly 500 views per episode. Um, fun. Uh, I wanted to mention that uh, we did a release since last uh, video. We did the, uh, I did the LibSSH2 release 1.5.0. The first release in 800 days. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it was long due. Finally, we managed to cram it out. Uh, I would say that the biggest feature or the biggest change then uh, since the previous release was the um, support for the Windows native uh, crypto stuff backend instead of using OpenSSL or uh, libgcrypt uh, for, the, for the crypto stuff. You can actually build the libssh2 now to use the, the Windows native crypto stuff, which is kind of good for those who, who run in on Windows who, who want to reduce the number of dependencies or, or third-party libraries. And we also included a security advisor that is a fix for a for security problem. It has a CVE number that I don't remember, uh, but I, there is a link somewhere here to the advisory that uh, we, we posted. So basically, it's uh, when, when connecting with SSH to a server, there's of course a, a bunch of negotiations going on uh, before uh, and in this case, the, the problem was that before we we trust the other end, before we know that it is a trusted and known server, there's a, a negotiation about uh, a key exchange um, thing. And the, the, it's a binary um, protocol, so it sends a lot of data. And in this case, it send, sends, uh, I don't remember, a bunch of strings, really, uh, more than seven. I think it's like 10 strings or something. And it sends them like length, data length data length data so you should you're supposed to read the length and then and then follows the string and then it's another length for the next string and so on so you don't really know how, how, how long each string is and in this case libssh2 read that length kind of assumed that it was fine because the, of course this why would the server lie and then it would um, m advance the pointer that many bytes and read the next string then from that position and if you would connect to a like a malicious server or some someone doing man, man in the middle or something, you could just craft that initial packet to send some really crazy sizes there, and and libsh2 would just ooh megabytes or gigabytes of size. Okay, we move on the pointer to somewhere else and read from there, and it would most likely end up in a crash, like you could denial of service. Um, a client than using libssh2 or possibly do even even do even more creative um, attacks it's hard to to figure out exactly how you can abuse that but i'm sure you can if you're being creative and give and give enough time so we fixed that in 1.5.0 so moving on we also had some uh, regressions in that version actually so so there have been uh, we've fixed a couple of more bugs since the release so maybe it should be a 151 release not too far away anyway uh, my uh, curl talk from fostem in february february 1st right um, I, I talked about curl in the embedded room and that video finally went uh, up from the fostem guys uh, team and I posted about it on my blog so you can see it there 25 minutes about me just presenting curl so basically uh, if you see this, you probably know most of the curve stuff already, but sure, you can you can see it. Maybe you'll you'll appreciate it anyway. <clears throat> and in the curl project, we 
I changed header order slightly in the, in the normal HTTP requests because it turned out, and I think I've seen it before, I've just ignored the fact that uh, the, the spec, the RFC 7230 now says that you should uh, send the host header as the first header after the, the initial request line. You know, in HTTP you send the request line and then a bunch of headers, uh, any number of headers really. And it says, and now the, this, this RFC says you should send host as the first header. And we got a bug report on it, and I quite agree. So I am, um, and, and we do it in in most of the cases. There were just a, a set of headers that sometimes could be sent before the host header. So I just basically made sure that it never happens that way. Even if you send a custom host header, it'll now end up as the first header. Um, of course, that wasn't really, really much of a big change. In it, it probably I don't know of any anyone that actually cares about the order. It's more about being more correct and possibly look more like the browsers, and possibly there uh, uh, there will be some effect in the long run. But um, I would say that the biggest impact was on me because I then I had to change uh, like 121 test cases or something like that to make sure that they test the headers in the same order that curl sends them. That, that, that took the bulk part of that change. It took me hours to, to go through those tests and and manually basically move the host header from wherever it was and to the top position. That was not uh, fun. But anyway, now it's done. I, and I committed and pushed it and um, there were some follow-up commits, but uh, it seems to be fine now. <clears throat> Another silly fix or perhaps silly reason for the fix was that um, I mentioned it before that when you connect to an HTTP2 server with curl uh, uh, over HTTPS, so you have a TLS connection and you want to speak um, uh, HTTP2. In HTTP2, the, um, the spec, which still isn't an RFC, we're all waiting for an RFC number. It's being, it, it is approved, so it's in the queue for an RFC publication. So we hope that it'll show up at some point. And I'm sure there are about 22 blog posts, at least from different people all over the world, just waiting for that RFC moment to press publish. Anyway, in that RFC, that isn't an RFC yet, uh, um, the, there's a lot of, uh, there's several um, requirements written on how to do TLS when you do it with HTTP2. So um, um, basically, a strict implementation of, of HTTP2 then will re, re, reject, uh, well, I should say, unsafe uses of TLS when doing HTTP2. And I mentioned it before that the golang.org server does that. It's very strict, so it rejects curl when, when we try to connect to that server and speak HTTP2, and it is uh, annoying. And I wanted to fix that in curl, and then I noticed that uh, we can actually just make curl in the with an open SSL backend, I should say that just it's a bit complicated since we have so many backends, so it's things vary depending on which backend. But in the open SSL backend, which is the one I tend to use, and I think it still is uh, the most popular one used widely uh, in the world. I mean, if you use that, we just didn't sort and use the ciphers in the strongest cipher first uh, method or, or way. So I would, uh, the only thing I had to do was just tell OpenSSL that, oh, use these ciphers in the strongest, uh, I mean, in the order strongest to the uh, weakest order, so that it would pick the strongest first. And since um, the normal setup, we have uh, a lot of strong ciphers, and modern OpenSSL has a lot of strong ciphers, and then normally when you speak to an a a TLS, sorry, an HTTP2 server with, with these strict TLS requirements, they will of course also support these strong ciphers because otherwise they couldn't be that strict. So I just had to add a little string to the cipher string to use in OpenSSL and ta-da, we can speak fine with golang.org and other uh, uh, HTTP2 servers speaking um, TLS. Basically, uh, well, I haven't found any problems with any other sites uh, so far at least. But then there, there aren't that many HTTP2 servers to try with. Another little fun thing, perhaps, uh, is that um, Stefan 
Icing, his name is, right? Um, he's, um, he's submitted a bug that when you send a post over HTTP2, especially a form post, but also a regular, a normal um, logic post, we actually include the expect header magic, uh, which then, and we don't, um, HTTP2 don't, it doesn't have any expect 100 continuum logic in it. So sending an expect header in HTTP2 is pointless and, and it just made curl wait for, for a second before it sent its, uh, sends its payload. So it turned out to be slow then to do posts over HTTP2. Fixed now in Git. Uh, speaking then about um, HTTP2 and Stefan Ising, he is the uh, primary author of a new Apache module to speak HTTP2 called mod H2. Which is fun because, uh, I mean, Apache is still the, the number one uh, web server on the, on the internet. So I, I'm sure that a lot of you and a lot of, uh, and I too, uh, we are interested in, in, in seeing progress here to run experiments and, and get an easy way to run HTTP2 on our servers. HTTP2 then also, um, <laughs> Stefan also brought up a, a question and um, we, we talked about it before in the HTTP2 mailing list and so on. And, and uh, I brought it up back in September and it's about how to do post and upgrade in the same HTTP 1.1 request. So if you want to do a huge post and you send an upgrade, how will a HTTP2 server behave? I mean, will it switch to HTTP2 or not? And it turns out that in, in Stefan's case, in a mod H2, and there were some other, I don't remember exactly, I think it was the Jetty guy who also mentioned that they will not upgrade to HTTP2 in a post. So doing post plus upgrade will probably not result in an upgraded connection. So if you would do multiple um, requests, then it would rather than upgrade on, this, on the next request that isn't a post with an upgrade. A minor detail in, in all um, <laughs> considered everything, uh, especially since it's that's the TCP version of HTTP, HTTP2, which then isn't very widely used, and that's also why we kind of run into these things now because there are no servers around with that, that allow plain text HTTP2. Possibly that'll change if mod H2 um, brings brings this to the table. We'll see. Um, well, that's about it for this week. I um, Today then is March 18 and March 20. That is in two days on Friday. Exactly 17 years ago, I did my first release of Curl. 17 years, 6,205 6, days uh, of Curl. Of course, curl wasn't really the first version either, so it wasn't really the third name of the of the project of the tool that I made then. But it was the first release, and it was the first sign of curl name in public. So, 17 years. That's kind of awesome. I'll try to sum up a lot of silly things and facts and um, what has happened during these 17 years on a, on my blog on, on Friday. Um, that's it for this week. Uh, there's also um, there's also a, a let me see here. I'm but the, 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 I wanted to check the calendar because I think there's right there's the curl feature freeze for the next release uh, is on next Wednesday in seven days. So if you have any features for curl for the next release or whatever a larger thing, uh, make sure you get it in in time because on on Wednesday then we'll close for new features and we'll work on bug fixes for four more weeks and then do 7.42.0. We don't have any major things in, in, in the release notes yet. Uh, I think um, hopefully we'll get some more TLS things like the TLS false start support. I would, I would gladly get that in. <sighs> hopefully. Anyway, this is a long episode today. This is number 25. I will be back next week. And uh, hopefully, like a day or so before the feature freeze release, and we'll see what if we get any mm, feature, new features or not into curl. And in Firefox, I've been 
landing a bunch of online offline things. Um, I have more online offline things pending. And uh, I also started to work a little bit on a bunch of coverity scan complaints on the, on the Firefox code. There are a lot of them. And uh, I kind of started to focus on the network related ones and I started to uh, file bugs and, and patches for those. So I'm hoping to clean up that thing going forward. See you next week. Bye.